Number one, 20 students participated in a psychology experiment which measured their heart rates in two different situations shown in these two dot plots. What are the appropriate measures of center and variability to use with this data? Explain your reasoning. So if you look at these dot plots, we can see um, that the shapes are both symmetric. And when we have symmetric distribution, then the best measure of center is the mean and then the center of variability would be the mad. So I'm going to say the mean and the mean average, the mean absolute um, deviation would be appropriate. And my reasoning is because the data is symmetric. And it says um, which situations show a greater typical heart rate. And so then the typical heart rate would be with the um, mean in this case. And so the mean is going to be right in the middle of these symmetric distributions. And so if we look here, our mean is going to be right here, right in between um, all the data. So this is going to be like 87.5. So right in the middle of 85 and 90, where down in situation B, the middle is right here at 85. So the situation with a greater typical heart rate is going to be situation A at 87.5. And then which situation shows greater variability, meaning kind of the data is um, wider or more different? And so here we kind of have like a lot of data right around that 87.5, right? We've got it out to 80 and we've only really got two numbers out further, 175 and 1, 100. And then, and which is like, what, 12.5 away from the mean. So let me draw that on there. So when we're talking about this, this is really only 12.5 away from the mean. And so is this, but most of the data, most of the data is right here, um, only 7.5 away. And then when we look at this situation, um, you do have data down here, right, at 15 away from the mean and then 15 away from the mean. So that's really a wider distribution, meaning more variability. So we're going to say situation B because the really the standard deviation that's more when the data is wider, but I'm just going to say because the data is more spread out. And you could say the standard deviation is wider if you wanted. Number two, Invent two situations that you think would represent the distributions with, represent distributions with similar measures of variability and explain your reasoning. So this could be your own, right? Like I'm just going to come up with a, an example, but yours could certainly um, be different than mine. So for mine, I'm going to say um, that situation number one is spin a spinner. with my eyes open. And then situation number two is going to be spin the same spinner with my eyes closed. Um, and so I think that these are going to give me similar distributions because the where the spinner lands really doesn't have anything to do with whether my eyes are open or shut. So spinning the spinner isn't really impacted by um, whether my eyes are open or closed. So the data produced is going to be similar. Again, you could definitely come up with other situations. This is just an example. So as long as your two situations produce similar data, your answer is good. Part B says invent two situations that you think would result in different measures of variability. 
Um, so varying data from this. So it's got to be two kind of similar situations where the outputs are similar, not like things, you know, you wouldn't want something that's a number and then something that's a color um, because you want there to be variability. So you want number answers or color answers or something similar. So my situations are going to be the first one, um, the average number of students wearing a coat to school in December. And then situation number two is going to be the average number of students wearing a coat to school um, all year. So looking at all of the months instead of just December. Um, my reasoning for this is that um, looking at co people who wear coats um, in December versus the entire year will give different data because um, many more students will be wearing coats in December since it is colder. Number three, the data set um, the data set and some summary statistics are listed. And so you can see the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and the interquartile range. How does adding five to every value in the data set impact the shape of the distribution? So hopefully um, you can answer this without making a dot plot of this. However, if you don't know the answer to this, you could certainly make a dot plot, a dot plot of this data and then add five to every data point and look to check yourself. Um, but if we add five to every value, um, the graph uh, will just move to the right on our number line, five spaces, but the shape won't change. Since we're just taking all of these data points and just moving them over five, that shape will stay the same. And then how does adding five to each value in the data set impact the measures of center? So the mean and the median. Now these will move forward, right? So this, all of this data. So if you can think of your number line, right? So if I kind of draw out a number line, not a very straight line, but let's say 11.5 is down here and the highest number 21.5 is here. And so then we have this data, right? And I'm not going to plot it all, but if we can think about like we've got this data here, right? Now, if we just take this same exact data, so let me copy this. And all we do to it is we move every data point to the right five units. Okay, that's going to just move. Now here you can see that the shape didn't change, but it's going to take and it's going to move these numbers up five, right? So now this number right here, okay, will be 16.5. And then this number up here will be 26.5. So it just goes ahead and shifts all of that. Now that's obviously the minimum and the maximum number, but the same is going to be true for the center. So the mean and median will both um, go up by five. Number four, here are two box plots. Which box plot has a greater median? And remember the median is um, the middle of that box. So we can see that the median in this one is 105. And the median in this one is between 100 and 105. So that means that the median in box plot A is greater. And then which box plot has greater variability? So which one is more spread out? So which one is kind of wider? And if you look at this, here's this interquartile range if we look at it. And if I just grab this and move it down here, 
we can see that box plot B, the data is wider or that interquartile range is wider than it is um, in A. So that means that um, box plot B has greater variability. Number five, the depth of two lakes is measured at multiple spots. For the first lake, the mean is about 45 feet and the standard deviation is eight feet. For the second lake, the mean is 60 feet and the standard deviation is 27 feet. Noah says that the second lake is generally deeper than the first lake. Do you agree with Noah or not? And I think um, your answer could be either or here, depending on how you justify your answer. So my take on this is that Noah is correct. And the reason I believe that is because, um, so I'm going to say Noah is correct because the typical depth of the second lake is much deeper, 45, 60 feet compared to 45 feet than the first lake. So when we're talking generally deeper, if it's typically, the mean is typically deeper. So the second lake is typically deeper. That's what I'm going to go with is that he's correct. Although um, there is more variability in the second lake. So there are definitely um, going to be spots in the second lake that are not deeper than the first. Since if we take kind of the standard deviation away, since, um, you know, the typical most of the depth will be between so if we do 60 minus 27, that's going to put us at 33. Between 33 and 60 plus 27, 87 feet. Where the first lake is between, so if we do 45 minus 8, that's going to be 37. And 45 plus 8 is going to be 53 feet. So, you know, the first lake is more consistently deep where this second lake is going to have some spots that are certainly less deep but also a ton that are below right typically 60 feet and it goes down to 87 feet so i'm going to go with noah you could argue um maybe because the standard deviation is eight and what you want to define as generally Number six, the dot plots display the height rounded to the nearest foot of maple trees from two different tree farms. Compare the mean and the standard deviation of the two sets. So we can see that they're both symmetric. And that symmetry line, which is going to be your mean, is right here and also right here, right? We could fold the data over. So the mean in both sets, whoops. Is the same, okay? So the mean is the same. However, the standard deviation, which is the width of the data, is larger in the second set. So we can see that this second set is wider. So that standard deviation is going to be larger in the second set. And then what does the standard deviation tell you about the trees at these farms? When we talk about standard deviation, that's going to be the variability of the trees. So the variability of the heights is greater in the second farm meaning there's more there's like more different heights okay so you're gonna have higher and lower trees than in the first one because the variation or the variability is wider so there's going to be more heights in the second set number seven which dot plot has an interquartile range of 10 
So remember that the interquartile range is how far it is from the edges of this, these, this box here. So if we look at this, this is one, this would be two right here. So this is going to be 1.5 all the way up to 12. So that's more than 10. This one is significantly lower than 10, just goes from 9 to 12. C starts at 2 for that Q1, and then Q3 is at 12. 12 minus 2 is 10, so the width here um, is 10. So we take Q3 minus Q1, and we get the interquartile range that we wanted. Number 8, what is the effect of eliminating the lowest value negative 6 from the data set on the mean and the median. So let's look at the median first because it's quicker to calculate. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 data points. So the middle is going to be here splitting it at 5 and 5. So our median for the original is in between these two data sets, right? So the middle of 3 and 5, which is 4. Once we eliminate this low value, Okay, now the median moves up to this spot. So we have four numbers below it and four numbers above it. So the median is going to move from four to five. Then when we look at the mean, remember we need to add all these values together. So if you add these up with the negative six, you get 41 and we had 10 data sets. So that original or data values. So that original median is going to be 4.1. Then when we remove the negative 6, okay, which actually increases our total to 47. So when we add these values together, we get 47. And now we only have 9 values. When we divide those, we end up getting a mean of 5.2. So the median and the mean are both increased. The median goes from 4 to 5, and the mean goes from 4.1 to 5.2.